Okay. Thank you so much for, for coming this early morning after all the parties here. So it's great to be back as well here at Casual Connect. I was here about a year ago. And uh, as you can see, my name is Anders Jepsen, and I joined uh, RIM about a year and a half ago. And I've been in the gaming industry for about 15 years, running my own studio and doing a lot of console and mobile mobile stuff. So uh, I was quite excited when I got the offer to head up the gaming strategy at, at BlackBerry to, to, uh, to really help them get back into the game. And I, I think we're actually really getting there now. So for the last year, uh, my main folks have been to help RIM create the easy and developer-friendly platform uh, for developers to help them monetize. And let's face it, today everybody needs to go cross-platform. It, just, it just makes sense to bring out your IP to as many consumers as possible to, to monetize. But at the same time, there's a lot of unique features in each ecosystem and platform to make sure you have a great app discovery and retention and sociality and social integration is one very big cornerstone today in uh, ever increasingly competing market to, to, uh, for the customers and BlackBerry with BlackBerry Messenger and, and the reason why you buy a BlackBerry today it, it's why it's plus it's a really really social device and, and the social DNA is deeply engraved into BlackBerry so make no mistake your gaming social and, and, and uh, it's a very, very big component moving forward for, for BlackBerry, as is our use, uh, corporate base as well, of course. So for about two years ago, RIM has been building a, this optimized and differentiated platform from the ground up. And basically, they, they keep nothing. We're building everything again from, from the ground up to make sure that it's, it's ready for the next 10, 15 years of mobile computing, like uh, our MC here talk, talked about. Uh, Laptops, they're really going away for most people. It's, it's, it's a mobile computing, cross-device, multi-screens, etc. And for that, you need a really strong uh, operating system. And that's the reason why RIM acquired QNX a few years back. That's the reason why they acquired Cellmania for, for, for a great App Store experience. And Torch Mobile to have a really, really good uh, HTML5 and browser experience. And it's also the reason that they acquired TAT, the Astonishing Tribe, where I came in about a year and a half ago. And TAT uh, and their software and, and, and their understanding about user experience, that software is in over half a billion phones today in the marketplace. All this old Samsungs and, and Nokias and Motorola's and Cernerics and et cetera, et cetera, use that software. But now it's exclusive for BlackBerry and the BlackBerry developers. And the, one of the first things that did was also to make sure that we further enhance uh, the BBM and the BlackBerry Messenger sociality by acquiring Scoreloop. It's, uh, so, so social API uh, proposition with leaderboards, achievements, microtransactions, and uh, virtual goods, virtual currencies, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really fantastic API, and it's going to remain cross-platform. So if you're playing a game on your playbook, you can continue on your BlackBerry 10 phone, and, 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 and you can at the same time compete with your Android buddies or your iPhone buddies or your et, et cetera. And that's what, 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 what gaming is about. It's having fun together. You're not really playing anymore in your own room. So, so it's... Uh, that was a really good acquisition, I think, and the first thing we did. So yes, BlackBerry is definitely serious about gaming, and the platform we're building right now, it's based on open standards. It's not Java anymore. It's POSIX SDL, open, open source, and, and OpenGL, et cetera. And tooling is really great. We're adding Visual Studio, and, and we have Momentix, and, and, and we're doing a lot, lot more in, in the tooling space as well. So you'll be seeing a lot more of this coming out in the next few months leading up to the launch of the devices. We're going to have really low device fragmentation as well. So what's runs on the, on, 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 the, on the tablet devices automatically runs on, on, the, on the phones as well. And it's up to the developer to decide how to monetize that. Uh, and on the, on the user side, I mean, payment options. BlackBerry, we have a really close relationship with over 650 carriers in 170 countries all over the world. And for many consumers in many, many regions, uh, carrier billing is where it's at. That, that's how they want to pay for their apps and their, and their games on, on the devices. So BlackBerry has by far the best relationship with those kind of uh, partners worldwide. But obviously we do credit card and, and uh, PayPal billing as, as, as well. And socially enabled content, that's Scoreloop and BBM, et cetera. So, so for you as a developer, we don't really want to say you have to do native or, or HTML. That, that's, that's the stuff. You, you, know, you need to do your games in web, et cetera. So if you're a native developer, we have probably the best native SDK in the marketplace now. And there are some testimonies. And I have a, a, a guest here as well. With me today, that's going to talk a little bit about the porting experience to, to, to BlackBerry in, in a little bit. But if you're doing web, HTML5, WebWorks, uh, or, or if you do Adobe Air uh, apps, we have probably also the, the best Air player on, on mobile today with really great performance. But it doesn't stop there. Even if you don't want to commit right now and you have, you're running your stuff on Android, 
just package it in our bar files and, and you can submit uh, your Android game without modification. It, it's gonna run on Playbook and it's gonna run better than most of the Android devices out there actually. So you have a lot of options to, to, to go to this new BlackBerry 10 platform to dip your toes in the water. So the, the, in the press, we all, we all read what people are, are writing about BlackBerry right now and especially in this part of the world. We're number one in many regions in the world but not, not in the US right now. So BlackBerry is only for corporate users and, and uh, old legacy devices, etc. But actually, over 80% of our 80 million users are consumers. They use it because of BBM and, and the social functions that are built into the platform. Women between 15 and 30 is the biggest user demographics in the United Kingdom, for example, and in England. And, and uh, we're the number one smartphone in that region as well. So it's not only block breaker anymore, uh, even if it was a good game of its time and a lot of the CEOs, when it was really a business phone, they, they love to play uh, Rick Breaker. It's actually, we have tons and tons and tons of games coming every week now and all the big ones are basically on, on board right now. And uh, monetization, you can't make money on BlackBerry. There's actually a lot of people that are making a lot of money on BlackBerry and we actually have more paid downloads than on Android markets according to, I don't even know what it says, Janky Research Group. We have 43% 40, more daily down, downloads per app than on the Apple App Store. Sure, we have fewer apps, but the apps that are selling are actually making more money. And they're making 40% more revenue than, than Android apps. And the developers today on BlackBerry App World, over 13% of the developers make more than $100,000. And, and, and that, that, that's, you, you, know, you know yourself, it's, it's hard to get through, through all the noise and, and, and all, all the rubbish on, on the other app stores that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of, of apps. So. It is important for developers to have a, a good revenue stream. So that's one of the reasons that it's really important to, to consider going cross-platform, even if you make the bulk of your money today on, 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 on one of the other platforms. So we talked about this. It's not just Java anymore. It's actually based on POSIX and STL and open standards. We're, we're porting all the mostly common uh, open source projects uh, like, like Boost, Lua, Box2D, Bullet Physics, Recast, Cocos 2DX, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is available on github.com slash BlackBerry. If you go there, you can just download that and include that in, in, in your code base and compile, and it will run automatically on the, on the playbook. It's just standards and open source stuff. So it's uh, basically zero work to get onto the platform as a developer today. So while a lot of consumers still really like their keyboards because they are very social and, and like to interact with their friends, and they, a hardware keyboard is a hardware keyboard. Even I, I was a diehard touch touchscreen person before I, I, I joined BlackBerry. I can't put down my 9900 anymore. I just love the keyboard. So probably I'll do a lot of my gaming on my, on my seven inch BlackBerry instead and, and, and have the phone for, for, for when I'm really social and, and, and uh, I, I need to be able to type fast and do all my tweet, tweeting and, 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 and all of the email, et cetera, on that device. So, but it's, it's up to you as a consumer. So right now the playbook is in the market. It's been out for a, a, about a year and it's a, dual core, one gigahertz, symmetrical multitasking. It actually has a lot better performance thanks to the operating system than the hardware specs would, 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 would tell you. And the first phone that we will be releasing in the early beginning of next year, it's gonna be a full touch device as well. So everything that you have running, if you're starting off on Playbook, you can just put the file over on your BlackBerry 10 uh, phone and it's gonna run automatically. And once the phone is out, user experience that is on the phone device is going to be as a software update for, the, for our tablets as well. So it's gonna be unified user experience and a unified envir environment for, for you developers as well to develop for it. So we're actually still seeing a really rapid global growth uh, at BlackBerry. And you, you can see over the years here from 2009, 10, 11, and 12, just in the last three quarters, we have over 33 million new device sales uh, in, in the world, and we're approaching uh, 80 million users. Uh, and uh, same, it's the same thing with our App Store. Uh, we we're seeing a 220% increase for just from, from last year, and it's not slowing down, quite the opposite. It's really accelerating. And together with, with the outreach we have and the close partnership with all the carriers, there's a great opportunity for everything from regional preloads to, to, to marketing opportunities, et cetera, for you as a developer, if you bring some really high grade content that makes sense for a specific region, for example. And we, we have these really close relationships to help you guys set up those kind of opportunities. And then if you combine that with BlackBerry Messenger, where we have around 60, 60, 50, 50, 56 million monthly active users right now, and it's, it's not like 
Facebook, when I, when I send something to Facebook, maybe my friends read it in 15, 20 minutes or, or the next day. When I'm BBMing somebody, it takes uh, on an average 37 seconds before they have replied, says, uh, watch the message or reply to it. So if you combine that with a game invite or I just beat your score or uh, any other kind of, I just bought this awesome game, you should really check it out. I click on it and I end up in Apple and I can just press buy and, and get that game. You can just think about what that makes for, 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 for driving monetization for your game. So it's not just being featured that counts, it's everything between the day you're featured until you're featured the next time where you need to help retain uh, monetization for, 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 for your content. So right now we made the available uh, API, the uh, API is available on our BBOS devices and uh, have about, for the last, I think we made it available uh, six months ago and we have about 1,000 apps right now that use BBM uh, integrated into their apps. And on average, they're seeing almost 300,000 downloads just because they added BBM to their games. So that's between 20 and 30 times the, 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 the downloads that they, they, they can see just by doing those kind of integrations. And that really helps with monetization. And I think we covered Scoreloop al already. Basically, it's the most feature complete uh, social API out there. It's free to use, it has cloud storage, it has leaderboards, achievements, challenges, virtual goods, virtual currencies, et cetera, et cetera. And if you implement that in, 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 your, in your games, any platform you're on, iOS, Blackberry, Android, you're doing Marmalade games, Unity games, Windows Phone, and, and, and even Bada, all of those users can compete and, and see whatever uh, scores are being beaten, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's really a great proposition for you developers, and I really encourage you to take a look at it if you haven't already. Just looking then at the new platform, the BlackBerry 10 and, and, the, and the Playbook, it's actually, the Playbook, despite having a, a very relatively low install base compared to our, our almost 80 million mobile phones that are in, in the old generation Java, uh, the Playbook is already generating more downloads and, and, and revenue than, than, than the other old, old, old platform, and it's just pointing straight up into the sky. And five out of eight of the, of the best-selling apps are games on, 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 on BlackBerry now. So our consumers, they're, they love great content, they're definitely willing to pay for it, and, 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 and they are buying everything that is good, that is, that is, that is coming there. So I really encourage you to, to, to try it out. And uh, there's a great opportunity as well to, to get, uh, get featured on, 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 on AppWorld and, and work with our digital marketing teams for social media and, and PR, et cetera. And I have here in the audience Jenny Popova, who's responsible for featuring uh, on AppWorld. So she would love to talk to you guys afterwards if there's anything you would like to know uh, about getting featured and, and, and promoted uh, via AppWorld. And this is basically what, what, it, what it looks like today. So, so Jenny can show you more on her device uh, later. And this, these are just a, a very few, I could stand here and speak all, all, all day about the, the, what, what's been happening with BlackBerry and gaming uh, just the last six to 12 months. So these are just a, a, few, a few of the, the things we're, we're, we're working on right now and some of the partners. So for example, I talked about GitHub. So go there, we even have, we built our own internal game engine called Gameplay and it supports iOS, Android, BlackBerry 10, Playbook, uh, Mac desktop and Windows desktop. And it's super, super well structured. It, it's, uh, it's uh, free to use, you can copy paste from it or you can use it as your cross-platform go-to-market strategy. And there's a lot of developers, especially in Latin America right now, who are actually using gameplay commercially and, and they're starting to release games cross-platform. And it's, uh, it's a really great architecture built by our internal technical gaming team. And it's based on all the Cocos 2D and, and bullet physics, et cetera, et cetera. All, all of that is built into that and we're continuing to update it. So you can just go to GitHub uh, slash BlackBerry and, 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 and download what you need. Visual Studio, we've been working on a Visual Studio plugin in closed beta now for a few months. And uh, very, very, very soon, we're gonna release a public beta for Visual Studio. And a lot of developers that do cross-platform development are using Visual Studio. I know that from ex experience. So I'm really happy to say that uh, with full debugging, it's coming, coming very soon. So keep an eye out or follow me on Twitter. I'm, I'll be sure to tweet it the second it's out. And Exit Games, uh, it's probably the best real-time multiplayer uh, API out, out there. And it's, uh, they even have a free edition to use. And it supports all the major platforms, including console. And uh, a lot of the big uh, publishers like Codemaster Glue and Namco and all of them use this API to do real-time multiplayer. And you can do real-time multiplayer as well on mobile. And it's becoming available as of today on, on BlackBerry as well, BlackBerry Playbook and, and BlackBerry 10. And then for freemium models, I can just mention briefly, uh, the, the first 
uh, there's actually a lot of games now that are doing free freemium on BlackBerry as well. So we have our payment service API now out, and both GameLoft and, and like Frisbee Forever uh, using Unity is, is using uh, in-app purchases today uh, as a freemium model for, for BlackBerry. So that's definitely a possibility for you to monetize. And there are tons of developers uh, on, on board, board already, and, and every day I, I, I get email from, from new developers saying, we, really, we tried out your playbook and uh, we really love the APIs and we're bringing games now. Can you please help feature our games and everything from Halfbrick to yeah, Galaxy on Fire 2, for example, by Fish Labs to, to Gameloft to Rovio, etc. Even Amiga is coming now with a lot of great um, uh, all-day Amiga games to our platform. And this is one of the developers, Golden Hammer, what they think about uh, developing on, on, on BlackBerry. It's basically, they said it was like 1,500 lines of code. It's about one third to one quarter of the size of how much code they needed to write to support any other of the, pl the platforms that they're supporting. And it was really, really quick to get approval. I think on an average a day or two and then your game is approved on AppWorld and uh, you can just push pl publish and it's uh, up for sale on AppWorld. So the turnaround time is really, really quick. We're really responsive. and. You have a great freedom to release whatever you like. We're not really policing. You're driving your business. You, be, you need to be responsible for your content, what you're putting up there and, 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 and selling. We want to give you the tools and, and, and help you build your company. So we don't want to be this gated community where we say you can do this and you can't do that, but, but et cetera. So there's a lot of freedom for, you, for your content here. Glitchsoft is another great developer. Uh, he was on stage with me at GDC, I think, and uh, Rob. And um, they had a couple of their games running on other devices in, in two days' time, just ported from iOS or Android. And uh, they really loved the performance, and especially the OpenGL performance of, of the playbook. They were really psyched. They didn't have to do any optimizations at all. And it, it, it ran really, really well. So and it's, it's a solid platform. This came from uh, Pocketeers, Battle uh, Balls Chaos. It's using Marmalade as, as their cross-platform go-to-market go, go strategy. And within 12 hours, they, they downloaded the BlackBerry version of the SDK ported and optimized the game and had it approved on AppWorld and out in less than 24 hours. They started to make money. So the, the, the threshold and the cost of going BlackBerry is very, very low. Same with paw print games. I think the engine code, 370 lines of code, a few hours to integrate the build system, three hours to get the code compiling. And so in less than a day, they had actually all their four games up and running on, on, uh, on the device and they could have some coffee and sleep. Another great developer, I don't know if you played Galaxy on Fire 2 uh, HD, it's a fantastic game, 250 megabytes, tons and tons and tons of multi-channel multi voice acting, uh, sound effects, 3D sounds, etc., etc. In less than, I quote him, one fucking day. That's how long it took his CTO to, to uh, get the game running on Playbook with, with, with full features. So. His CTO, he really loves the platform and, and, and tooling, and his CFO is really psyched about the security. There's no piracy, because we're doing business stuff on our platform. That means that businesses need to be secure, but it needs to be secure because of piracy as well, so it benefits both consumers and, and, and businesses alike, and he liked the devices as well. And now I'm really, really happy to, to in, introduce a, a, a guest here, uh, Stefan from uh, Square One Games. He's gonna talk a little bit about his porting experience. I, Stefan actually sent me an email like a, less than a month back saying, we have this game now and it's uh, basically ready for, for launch on Playbook. We had never met before. Met before. And, and you kind of like the platform, so please. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Anders. Uh, I'm Stefan Jacobi, co-founder and CTO of Square One Games. We're an independent developer based out of Vancouver, BC, and currently we're primarily focused on mobile gaming, but we've had a long-standing history on Nintendo platforms prior to that. So has anyone here heard of The Bard's Tale? Yeah, so, it's, so last year a studio developed the, uh, the mobile version of InXL Entertainment's The Bard's Tale for iOS. The game was really, really well received on the App Store. It hit the top 10 in its launch week and it's been number one RPG in 75 countries since. Just last month we also released it on Mac App Store where it had similar success hitting, going as high as number three in its launch week. And today we're happy to announce that the Bard's Tale will be coming very soon to BlackBerry App World with an initial launch for Playbook OS in August and then a BB10, a BB10 launch uh, when the launch happens. So why did, we start, why, did, why, why did we start programming or developing for BlackBerry? Well, when RIM announced support for native code, that's when we knew the interest was there. We've, we've always been a native house, so it was very important for us to have native code. And as soon as they announced that, the platform was on our radar as something we wanted to, ad to adopt. 
So we first started to port over the game. It was only a matter of hours before we realized that much of the work was pretty much already done from our previous iOS and Android ports of the game. With the coordinate native APIs of the BlackBerry based on open standards, it was merely just an effort of recompilation and repackaging. And in just two short days, what had started as platform experimentation was looking like it could become a finished product pretty quickly. With a little extra effort to support OS-specific functionality such as in-app purchase, you know, native video player, we essentially had a fully finished commercial app in under a week, and that was just a single person working on it. And BlackBerry is by far the easiest port that we've ever done as a studio, and for us, an extremely inexpensive additional revenue stream to add to our portfolio. But what made it so easy? Well, for one, the BlackBerry NDK is designed from the ground up for native development. It's a pure C++ API, and no glue at all is required to get a game framework up and running on the platform. Second, the, the tool set which was originally provided with, a, with the NDK, the QNX Momentics, Momentics, was very accessible to newcomers to the platform. It also made iterating and debugging extremely, extremely easy thanks to a very fast debugger and application deploy times. Lastly, the, the platform's hardware and operating system runtime made the device more than up to the task to run a graphically and computationally heavy game like the Bard's Tale. The low overhead of the OS, as Anders mentioned earlier, really ups the spec, and so that the hardware specs don't really match up to other platforms with similar hardware specs, thanks to a very optimized OS. And lastly, I mean, worth mentioning is the fact that RIM provided amazing, amazing support, very timely. Every, every answer, every question was answered within 24 hours, very useful, and from this this experience being as positive as it's been, we're definitely considering using BlackBerry as a primary development platform for future cross-platform projects. So yeah, I hope some of you will try it out, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a note. But the Bard's Tale is also coming out very soon, so try it out as well. Thank you very much. Well, we, we had a live demo plan, but unfortunately I have some technical issues, so if you, anyone wants to try out the game, we'll have a version available during questions. Thank you. We have five minutes for questions if the house lights can come up. And William, if you're in the house, if you want to come up and Thank set you. up while we answer some questions, we have time for maybe one question. Well, I can start with a question. What's the uh, US retail price for the uh, uh, Playbook device? Right now, it's actually 199 for the 64 gigabyte version, so it's a steal. I would get five if I could, <laughs> but I get there them for free. I, I can actually say one more thing. We, we have a lot of playbooks. If you're a game developer and you want to try it out, if you go to our BlackBerry booth, I'll make sure you get a free playbook to bring home and play with, and hopefully bring, bring a game to, to our platform. So just run over there. The first 50 will get the playbook. Okay, well, thank you very much, Anders. Thanks so much.